It has an interesting looking shape. Uh, it's not like most cars you see. There's no flat lines on the car. Everything is round, which is really rare these days. Everybody's going for the wedge shape. So your first impression when you see the car, it gets your attention because it's different, but at the same time, it's also inviting. You just want to walk up to the car, open the door and hop in it. Walking up to the car, you see these little door handles that you could barely put two fingers into and this little push button. So you open the door and you're walking into another world. This is the 1960 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Zagato. Most people haven't even seen them in person, it's only in the books and pictures and stuff. And so the chance to see one in person is very rare, let alone drive one. Every time I drive one, it's like I've never driven one before. It feels like the first time. This car sounds like nothing you've ever heard before. The typical alpha male sound, you know, just screaming at 7,500 RPM. sounds like a bat out of hell. There's no, there's nothing really to compare to it. It sounds like a little Ferrari, if you want to describe anything about it. You know, the Italians, they have that whole sound thing figured out. Part of what makes the sound of the car is just the whole design of the motor and the way the whole intake is and the exhaust system. Uh, usually when you hear a loud car, you hear all exhaust, but with the Alphas, it's all from the intake. When those, you open up those Webers, they just suck in so much air and fuel that it's deafening the noise that they make. The Giulietta SZ, it's, it's a momentum car. It's lightweight, low power, so it's all about carrying your speed. It's not one of those cars where, you know, you're at a red light, it turns green, and you just you punch it and the car takes off. It's just, you're driving the wrong car if you're expecting that. Uh, it's a real driver's car, so it's one of those cars where once you get in the canyons, you got to learn to keep your speed, not hit the brakes, and just connect all the corners. And your first impression when you, when you sit in the car is, wow, the steering wheel is really big and it's right in my face. But once you get going with the car and you start driving it, you realize they put it there for a reason. You know, you, and you're reaching for the shifter, it's really close to it. And you know, it's a really big wheel and you just you're just, it's just really easy to drive. When I'm driving the car, I see everything it's doing animated in my head. When I see the, when I'm stopping the car, I see the whole brakes, all the whole system working. When I'm giving gas, I see the crankshaft spinning faster, the pistons moving up, firing the spark plugs, and you know, taking the gas air in through the, you know, the, the intake. So you have a whole different understanding for the car why it's doing what it's doing. When you're at a car event and you see, you know, for example, you're at an Alfa Romeo event and you see a row of GTVs and you, right next to there's a row of spiders and then somebody, you know, drives up in this little jelly bean looking car, it's as if you're in a bar full of hot blondes and this smoking hot brunette girl, you know, long legs, tall heels walks in and just steals the show. Wow, yeah, this car, it just, any opportunity I get to drive it, I just, I take it, I don't even think. 